Support by the Hope Network Center for Autism. You can join us and be part of a mission that takes on the challenges, the barriers, the statistics, the seemingly impossible, and help us overcome them all. HopeNetwork.org slash autism. Home to over eight and a half million people. This taser is capable of delivering 50,000 volts. The task of protecting them falls to the country's biggest police force. You're under arrest, all right? Hello, Metropolitan Police, how can I help? Taser, show me your hand! I've got a taser, show me your hand! In a single year, they're called to 90,000 robberies and burglaries. Oh my goodness gracious me. Chase and suspects, come to Night Street. A hundred murders. You've been identified as being responsible for the murder of David McKenna. And make more than 190,000 arrests. Bingo. Go on! You unlawfully and maliciously cause grievous bodily harm. Can you think of a reason now why I should give you bail for this matter? It's my birthday tomorrow. <laughs> it's a force seen by some as the enemy. Black people growing up around here feel that the police is against them. My driver is coming to attack with a glass bottle. He's had his head split open. And another officer has been stabbed in the back of the head as they deal with life. You're 13, what are you doing using language like that? Come on, man. Death. Put on paradise. Crime and its victims. We lock up the bad people so that people like you can sleep safe and sound. 24 hours a day. Nearly 200,000 people are arrested in London each year. All spend time in one of the Met's 36 police custody suites. Hey, I'm waiting there, guys. Where is it? Number 10, I said. Hold in there. Don't break my elbow because I'm not a pet to the court, you. You and your foul mouth, you are something special, aren't you? Yeah, you better stay in there. Yeah, that's what, exactly what you are, sir. Sober up in there. Been drinking all day. Unfortunately, he's gone home and had a disagreement with his, uh, his flatmate over Brexit, can you believe? He got a bit physical. He's ended up punching and knocking out some teeth, so he's been arrested. Brixton Custody in South London is the busiest in the capital. Today, Custody Inspector Brian Smith could be responsible for up to 40 detainees. Is there anything else I can do to make us stay here more comfortable? No. All right, I'll get the blanket sorted out. If you need anything, just let me know, OK? All right, thank you. My job is to make sure that no one comes to any harm and everyone leaves there safe and well. That's the staff as well as the detainees. What a friendly chap. Needy is the word that we use. They can be very needy. Brian and his team process the detainees as they arrive and manage their detention. What's your first name? Mickey. Mickey, what's your last name, please? Mouse. We deal with everything here, from, from murder, the most serious crimes you could possibly imagine, right down to the most insignificant. We know exactly what was stolen. Yeah, 41 bars of uh, Cadbury's chocolate. You evil bitch! How dare you! You abuse your powers! Brixton lies in the heart of a London borough with one of the highest levels of mental illness in the country. She's been heard about this! I don't care! I will kill myself! You... The man is known to us, and um, he's known for like being violent, uh, had mental health issues, suicidal issues, self harm issues. He's also got a massive uh, bandage on his um, on his arm, where he's recently cut himself. There's also another PNC warning signal for the fact that when he was in prison, he tried to hang himself. Evil bastard! So, um, obviously, with his behaviour here, I've got his leg restraints on, so that will reduce any injury to himself and to my colleagues. Uh... It's not it's not great, don't get me wrong. You know, that's I enjoy doing that. But you've got to sort of do it and manage it as best as you can. Uh... 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 In another cell, a suspect has stripped naked and is refusing to go to court. He's, um... Oh, he's, he's, ur he's urinated. Excellent. 
What was his name again? Martin. Martin. Lucifer. What's to be known as Lucifer? Okay. Lucifer. Hello, mate. You all right? My name's Paul. I'm from the TSG. Basically, we're the riot police, all right? We've got to take you to court, my friend. I just want to let you know the le levels of force that we may use against you. <laughs> Obviously, we'll start off with conversation. Okay? Right, okay. You've got a bad heart. He's been arrested for a shoplifting matter and racially uh, abusing people in the uh, shop. Lucifer. Mate, you just spat. You just spat at me. It's on the screen. Please don't spit at me. Yep. No worries. When he came in yesterday, he was arguing and kicking and screaming that he'd been unlawfully arrested. And then this morning, quite clearly, he doesn't want to leave here. If he's got nowhere else to stay, then at least he's warm here, he's fed, he's looked after. Right. So obviously we'll try to engage with him. He's quite aggressive. I'll go and brief my officers, get him kitted up, and we'll do we'll do a cell extraction. Has anyone got their Superman pants on? <laughs> <laughs> oh guys, did I mention he's uh, urinated everywhere in his cell? So the, the floor is gonna be slippery when we go in. The territorial support group are often brought in to help with difficult and violent offenders. They are specialists in riot control usually policing public disorders and large-scale protests. We can't use CS because we'd have to evacuate the whole area. We can't use baton strikes and all that sort of stuff. So I'm thinking a contingency could be using taser. <laughs> Have you got a key to the, key to the cell or is it a car? Hold on, just wait there. We're going to open the cell door with shields and we're going to do strong verbal communications and get him to cooperate. If he doesn't cooperate, we're going to use reasonable force to extract him from the cell. Oh, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. I would imagine there is some mental health issue, so make sure we're aware of that. If I shout, just get him, we'll just get him. All right, we'll do the taser thing if it works, yeah? Lucifer, his name is. Lucifer. Get back from the door! Get back! Right. Get back! Do a take, right? Yeah. All right, fella, look at this! Look at this! This is a taser with us 50,000 volts! Me and my colleagues, any violence may be used against you. Step back from the cell door. Put your arms out. Put your arms out. Oh, what the arms oh, broken? You, what are you doing? Back up. Oh. Right. Okay. Right. Spin him oh. round. Spin him round. Oh. Right. So you can just lift your arms now and he'll, he'll walk like that. Right. Walk forward. Listen to my voice. Listen to my voice. Oh. Go ahead. Ah! Oh. Oh. My arm's broken! It's not broken! Ah! Oh. Listen to my voice, oh. you'll be okay! Oh. Just walk slowly! Oh. Slowly, yeah, lads, slow down! Oh. Keep walking, mate! Oh. Oh, what's the pole? Oh. The mental health, it, it's, it's my experience, is becoming more and more common in custody. Step up onto there, buddy! With reduced oh. services within the NHS, we become a stopgap and we perhaps get people coming into custody when maybe they shouldn't be. They come to us and we have a duty of care to make sure we look after them. Everyone okay? Everyone's good. Right. We deal with people who are by their very nature violent or because of what they've done are violent. And it's a job that can be very challenging. I was off for six weeks last year with a broken arm after somebody went berserk. I spent many weeks in hospital with a broken back back in 2000 after another one went completely crazy. So I've had my fair share of assaults. Why do you still do it? I love it. <laughs> it's good fun. Next, we are taking you to South London for a story that, I've got to warn you, you might well find quite upsetting, that a serial animal killer is operating there. A large number of mutilated cats found in Croydon has stoked rumours that a killer may be on the loose. My cats don't go out. I wouldn't allow my cats to go out at all. Is he chopping them up? Is it the whole Chinese kebab meat thing, or what is it? If they can go around killing cats, who should say then they, they couldn't stab a human being or whatever? This man must be captured. 
ASAP. Four animals at least have been reported dead within a few miles in little more than a week, having suffered what investigators describe as trademark mutilations. The killer has been dubbed the Croydon Cat Ripper, so keep the cats indoors. The Met have responded to public concern by handing the case to Detective Andy Collin, who's more used to investigating gangs and organised crime. It's without doubt the strangest case I've ever dealt with, really. It doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to it. Why would you want to do that? Many of the bodies have been found in the streets and gardens surrounding a park in Addiscombe. It's what used to be a, obviously a railway track that's been grassed over and it's obviously used by a lot of cats, especially overnight, uh, because they border onto the houses. We think that the cats have possibly been taken from inside this park. So where these dots are, that's where the bodies have been found. It all does centre around this park here we're in. And you've got reports of 20-odd cats that are uh, missing or being found mutilated. So heads removed, tails removed, some cut open. If a fox is taking a cat, they're going to hide it away if they're not eating it there and then, so they can come back to it. But we're finding cats that are left either in the front garden of a house, um, on a piece of grass like this, where someone's going to walk past and see it, uh, and they're not kind of dumped, they're laid out. The problem we've got is that whoever's doing this is good, um, seemingly, at what they do. For this person never to feature on any of our CCTV, as far as we're aware, is quite impressive, and he's kind of under the radar, and there's, there is planning and, and thought involved in this. The suspect could face charges of criminal damage and animal cruelty. It's a serious offence and it's affecting the confidence of the people living around here. Everyone knows about it. There is definitely pressure to get this done and get it done as soon as we can. That was probably a few months before his sad demise. He had been cut from throat to stomach and I believe his intestines were removed. Andy believes that Penny Beeson's cat, Ukio, was the killer's first victim. We're so lucky we didn't find him on our doorstep because that image would always be in our heads. And also, every time you go out the front door, you might think, oh, my God, what's there? Hearing more and more into it and the brutality of it mm -hmm. has just upset us. and We're still not over it even months on now. Yeah, uh, you know, he was part of our family and we miss him terribly. Penny's son, Richard, may be one of the only people who was caught a glimpse of the cat killer. I was actually walking through the passageway that I believe we may have got Ukiyo from at two in the morning. I think he might have had a mouse stick going through, going through the fence. And anyway, he was there and then he kind of stopped and was looking like this across the land, not wanting to see me. So I've walked through, gone to the end of the alleyway. But the person, when I came back in the alleyway the other end, was literally like this around the wall while I was standing, standing there. So if someone's doing that at 2 o'clock in the morning, they're up to no good. And it was only the next morning when I said I thought I saw this red extended mouse toy that Mum found one on Amazon and a YouTube video, and the sound was exactly the same as what I heard of this toy. Just goes to show, really, that you can use them as a lure. Um, the cat doesn't really care about anything else apart from this little toy mouse floating around. Um, so I suppose if you can get one hooked and interested in that, then you've got time to, to grab a hold of it if you want to. I've approached about three or four manufacturers in the UK, and they've supplied me with details of people that bought it in the, this sort of area, that, that bought it online, but at two quid. Um, and you can go into pretty much any toy shop and buy them. It's, it's, you're never going to get a full list of, of who's got what. But let's see. Andy has brought in a specialist in animal forensic pathology to carry out post-mortems on 19 of the cats. Just a cursory glance at this scan, you can see the head's missing and the tail as well. I've seen decapitations before, um, I've seen tail amputations before, limb amputations, but this number of animals, never quite seen anything quite bizarre as this. He needs to determine if all the cats have died in the same way and whether it's the work of a single person. It's overlapping the wound. 
This is the left medial thigh. All these injuries so far are consistent with a blunt force injury to the animal. The animal is open along its entirety, revealing the organs or what, what's left of them. That is strange. What we've got here is a clump of hair, and you can see it's been cut across. So this is indicative of a blade being used at some point during handling of this animal. Um, and there's muscle crushing against the exposed bone. So suggestive of a blade and possibly a hinged instrument being used, such as Sakata's garden shears. Important as well is there's no blood within the fur um, all around the wound. There'd be blood staining if this had happened in life. Of the cases we've seen, the wounds have all followed this pattern. So I'd be fairly confident in saying it's the same person performing these mutilations across these animals. Cool. To think that this is done by a human hand does make it quite, quite concerning. London, the seat of the UK government, plays host to over 250 large-scale protest events every year. Many of us around the table or on the phone will have been part of the great May Days, the June 18th, the, the various protests. We're always balancing this issue of the right to freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, um, you know, the freedom of thought against our core duties and responsibilities to prevent crime, uh, keep the peace, uh, you know, public safety. In short, help people keep them safe and catch baddies is what I would say. The Met's public order team are preparing for the annual anti-capitalist Million Mask March. It's probably the single biggest protest event in terms of challenge uh, that the Metropolitan Police faces in its fluid nature, uh, its potential for serious disorder, its high profile in terms of an international arena because this is not just a, a London event, this is a worldwide event and no small challenge for us. At the last demonstration, there were angry clashes between protesters and police. Chaos spread to the West End, causing damage to businesses and resulting in 50 arrests on the night. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. One of the issues from last year, the patrol vehicle got trashed. No one would let me know whose car it was in the end, for obvious reasons, but, uh, uh, but that car did get trashed, and that became the, the focal point. And by the time the Daily Mirror got it and had cut and pasted so many different pictures, it looked like battle zone London. Any number of occasions last time, we created a crowd because we put a cordon because we didn't know what else to do. And that's, that's no criticism of anyone, that's the way that we historically have trained. So you, as soon as you put a cordon on, by definition, you have a crowd. This year, commanders want to use a more proactive approach to reduce confrontation with protesters. Four weeks before the event, they're developing new crowd control tactics at a replica town built in a secret location. Okay, there we have it then. So that was very, very quick, quite slick. There we had the arrest team coming from that narrow alleyway to the rear left, blind to the crowd, going in, extracting the target. This time, we need to go in, we need to intervene safely in the way that we're being taught, and back out again, and then we can carry on. The phrase that Mr. Reed used, which is a good one, supermarket sweep. So grab, grab, effectively, get, yeah, grab and go. The supermarket sweep is a reactionary tactic used to quickly remove the apparent ringleader from the crowd. In this case, the man in the striped shirt, before a situation escalates. Large crowds are expected at the Million Mask March, and it may be challenging to successfully extract troublemakers. We need to know before we go in where our exit is as well and what, what the options are. To work your way through a crowd, maybe in the case of the To have the best chance of success, 
police will use a tactic known as the bubble, where a large group of officers encircle a suspect to isolate and remove them from the situation. My fear is that we do end up with large property damage and we do end up with members of the public and police officers injured. That wouldn't be acceptable. I was the person responsible for this event in 2014. This certainly kept me awake then. And I would anticipate a couple of sleepless nights in the run-up to Saturday, the 5th of November this year. Um, are you dependent on alcohol, drugs, solvents or anything else? Yeah. Cannabis? Ten any alcohol, drugs in the last 24 hours? <laughs> it's the day shift in Brixton custody. All right, put you through. A man has handed himself in after being reported for breaching his SOPO, a protection order related to a child sex offence. This gentleman, John, he was convicted at Woolwich Crown Court for a sexual offence. That's based on the sexual offenders register. He's not allowed to meet any child in a private place who's under 16 without the written consent or permission of that child's parent or guardian. John visited a school to read his self-published book to a class of four-year-olds, but failed to tell the school about his previous convictions. Is there anyone who is dependent on you who could be affected by you being here? My mother. She had a fall at half past seven this morning. I do need to make contact with her at some stage. Hello, sir. Hello. I'll try your mum now. Thank you. Two years ago, John was convicted of two counts of sexual assault against a nine-year-old boy and was sentenced to 16 months in prison. He also pleaded guilty to possessing indecent images of children. I made a massive mistake in committing my offence, and it was a sexual assault on a pupil. I placed my hand on the outside of a child's trousers. And that's why I was convicted. I think I've given myself a harder time about it than anybody else could possibly. And I've grown beyond that. But as you can see, I'm not being allowed to escape it. To, to prove to anybody that I'm not that person anymore. I had a blip. For goodness sake, I talked for 18 years and it didn't set a foot wrong. It was a minute of madness in my life. And I've thrown away a teaching career as a result of it. And I've suffered enough. You came to the school. You were there to talk about your book. That's correct. What's the name of that book? The book is called Sammy the Homeless Bear. Sammy, the eponymous hero of the story, gets lost, is adopted by a homeless man, and then eventually the homeless man goes to crisis at Christmas and says, we're going to find you a real home, Sammy, and puts him in the charity shop where I buy him. Quite a, quite a sharp story, but with a happy ending. The uh, visit that has caused a technical breach of my SOPO came because I had no idea that a classroom in the company of two teachers and classroom assistant actually qualified as a private place. Okay. Which I would like to be able to say was an innocent mistake. Did you not feel at any point that it was risky? Yes, of course it had occurred to me that it might um, not be very uh, sensible in terms of safety. That's not to say um, 
that I had any notion that I was going to breach my subway by visiting the school at all. You've admitted that's an error on your part? Yes. OK. I propose to just conclude the interview. The time by March is 16.21. Whether John is given bail or remanded in prison is in the hands of custody sergeant Simon Reason. The officers told me that he's breached his conditions by going to a school and reading stories to young children, so having contact with young children without the written consent of their parents. His order prevents him from doing that. He's gone there, he's given himself contact with young people, vulnerable young people who have no say um, or power over whether they have contact with him or not. John, has my colleague told you what's happening? Um, that I'm due to appear in court tomorrow. Crown Prosecution Service have made the decision to charge you. It's my decision whether I give you bail or not, OK? And I'm going to refuse you bail for several reasons. My understanding is you've got previous conviction for breaching such an order. So I'm concerned from that point of view, if I release you, you may commit further offences by breaching the order. All right? Sorry, to keep me in custody after? After, yes, yeah, so, yeah, so you're remaining in, in, in prison on remand. Okay. Okay, thanks, John. Worryingly in control. Uh, not phased by it at all. He's not stupid. He knows exactly what he was doing, and he has a desire to be near young children. He's putting himself purposely in that environment. He knows that he has children very close to him, whatever it is he wants to do you know, whether it's grooming or whatever, or just being close to them, he was probably leading up to offending again. I can't, I can't see any other reason why you would do that. You know all the restrictions placed upon you. You shouldn't be there. Your order tells you not to be with kids. There's no excuse. I'll bring in relationships to your camp. Um, sorry to hear about what happened last week. Um, it's not the uh, nicest thing to find on your, your lawn, really, is it, in the morning? All leads in the search for the Croydon cat killer are going nowhere. The body count is rising by the week. Evidence suggests the culprit is widening his net. It's known as the Croydon cat killer, which is quite catchy, but it's not. We're pushing the boundaries of the M25. It's, it's hard for me as a DS at Croydon to be dealing with offences locally, let alone when it comes to places outside the Met and the other side of London. Was there much in the way of blood around the, where the cat was found? It also makes it a lot harder if you, when we don't know who it is, which is the position we're in at the moment, that we're suddenly looking at a place where, what, nine, ten million people live and work. Andy's travelling 11 miles away from Croydon to visit the owner of Merlin, the latest cat to be found dead. Um, we've had Merlin for he's about six, seven years. Yeah. Um, had him since he was a kitten. Uh, was Merlin all black? All black, with three little white hairs on his chest. We normally keep our cats in at night. But that night he, he managed, to, managed yeah. to get out. <clears throat> it's not unusual for him to go out during yeah. the night if he manages to sneak out. Yeah. So I didn't really think anything of it. Until, you know, the next day he didn't come back for breakfast. Some binman mm -hmm. had been asking if anyone was missing a black cat. They said, don't go and look. There wasn't much of him. He had been decapitated. His limb was gone. And um, he had been essentially gutted. Obviously, yeah. for everyone, it's been... Not very nice. It's, it's an all too familiar story, I'm afraid. Mm -hmm. um, so taking the heads off it has been quite commonplace. Um, what we're finding is obviously the cats are taken local to home normally and they're displayed local to home. If you'd have found them outside your front door, it would have gone back outside your front door. Yeah. So it's probably taken from basically where he's Where he normally sits. Yeah. It's quite likely. There's a lot of people I deal with, obviously, in the, the police world. It's all, when you've got the cat job, ha, ha, ha. Um, when are you going to get a proper job again? And people don't realise the effect these sort of things have on people. 
when you're dealing with people's feelings, it does ensure that you want to stop him. And you really do need to, in my view, I've really got to bring it home somehow. There was an edge wear cat, which was quite some distance from us, um, which was uh, just prior to the 8th of March. Seems to have picked up again. Andy has called in profiling experts from the National Crime Agency to shed light on the killer's identity. Um, Friday, I did mention so. Even when the fans are trying to be random, and they say, oh, yes, I'm being random, I'm going to fool the police, they very rarely are. They're going to be linked to where that offender has associations, where they're used to travelling. You've got a huge cluster around our discomfort. The fact that they start that, you can't overlook that. You've got nothing anywhere else for a good sort of two, three months. Yeah. While well, it's all going off there. in this one area, that's a hot spot saying this is where the offenders most like to have a very strong connection, some sort of anchor point. Yeah. Pippa Gregory is a specialist in criminal behaviour and has helped to catch serial killers and rapists. What is clearly, it's not your average animal abuse. You get plenty of animal abuse, you get plenty of, um, like the stabbings of the cat, for example, mm -hmm. you know, somebody who's uh, pissed off with a neighbour or yeah. a partner or whatever. But it's, it's the post-mortem mutilation and the need to deposit, which is, which is um, particularly interesting. We don't know many of these individuals because they're often not yeah. found. Those that we do know about, um, have been found to have really quite dark and deviant sexual fantasies. Um, now, that's not to say that they are doing this to sort of to make up for the sexual fantasies, but there certainly seems to be that they are getting uh, gratification from the offences and the mutilation of the cats, but they also have within them fantasies about um, uh, mutilating or offending or killing or raping humans as well. Your offender is getting gratification from what he's doing, and it's a question of how long does that gratification last. And that's where the danger comes. It doesn't help you find him. The criminal side of it, the, sort of, the psychology around that was, was very interesting. The pushing towards sexual violent fantasies around that, the assumption that it's compulsive behaviour, and as soon as that gratification stops, he will look for something else to fill that. Yeah, it's, it's the first time, I suppose, if you like, that, they, that you've been hit squarely on the jaw when we wake up, this is what's going to happen. If we don't solve it, that may, they may be weeks, it may be years, it may be decades, you know, but it's going to happen unless we solve it. So, yeah, it, it has come as a bit of a, a kick today. In a few hours' time, Thousands of anti-capitalist demonstrators will descend on central London for the annual Million Mask March. So, people, this might be a long night, OK, and it's going to be cold. Go out there prepared. There are flares, there are fireworks coming to this event, OK, lots of them. We're going to see loads. They've been buying loads of flares. It's a real test for us to deal with nights like this. We're not going to let London be smashed up. We've got the palaces, we've got the home of parliament, the home of government. Any of those things get damaged, then that's, that's international news. And of course, with what is a busy capital city, on a Saturday night, we've got all of those other policing issues to deal with as well. The police presence has been dramatically increased this year with 3,000 officers, costing in excess of £1 million. Pounds. Last thing we ever want at a public order event is mass arrests. But if that's what it takes this year to protect central London, and that's what we'll do and we're geared up for it. It's 6 p.m. and protesters are beginning to assemble in Trafalgar Square. The Met's other tactic is to position liaison officers like PC Keith Leahy into the heart of the protest to try to establish rapport between the police and the protesters. Well, as people arrive, we're the first people that they meet. Um, hopefully people will recognise us as being friendly face of policing, uh, not as any unfriendly face of policing. Some of the messages that have been going out on social media about this event have been really, really disturbing. You guys look to me like really nice people, I'm not saying that you've been putting anything out like that. Yeah. This group hate us, absolutely hate us. They don't feel as though there should be police in the crowd at all. We're always just conscious that there is people here that, are, that may want to harm us and we're constantly carrying out dynamic risk assessments to, to make sure each other is safe. We're supposed to be 
in a, a democracy where everyone has the right to have an opinion. But if you look at it, we're under dictatorship from the rich because the government do what favours the rich and not the common man. Violence needs to kick off so they can understand that it is the majority speaking about the message. <laughs> You boys are out here enjoying yourselves tonight. March down to Parliament, have some fun, no trouble. There's section 12 and 14 conditions on this event tonight. And the only reason they're being put on is because of violence and disorder in the past. I'm, I'm explaining for the benefit of everybody. It is the most exhausting role in public order policing that I've ever done. It's really, really difficult. Conditions that are on an event so that they can make an informed decision tonight, that's all. Trying to establish a rapport with people who have no wish to have a rapport with police whatsoever. I'm not going to, if you want to stay here. You've asked me a question, I'm asking you about... And you're not coming in my face, intimidating and harassing me. Well, I'm trying to have my say in what standing, I think I've got to do. You're standing here, you get, that, That's why I'm here, to so make sure that people like you can have your say. That's why we're here. Our streets! Our streets! Our streets! Our streets! Our streets! Our streets! Have a good night, lads, all right? Enjoy yourselves. All policing is being directed from a special operations room by Chief Superintendent Jim Reed, also known as Silver Command. Is it? Any urgent issues that we need to discuss now? In charge of the whole operation is Commander B.J. Harrington, known as Gold Command. So Jane is working through the plan, lots of engagement, lots of differentiation. <laughs> What are they committing by waving fire acts there, Jim? Well, that's explosives act stuff there. Yeah. Go, Jane. And go, traffic act. Yeah, Jane, uh, my tolerance towards fireworks being fired like that uh, is getting very thin. Um, can we focus our intervention on those, please? You need to fire the police again. You're firing fireworks at the people. If they are clearly not complying with the Section 12 conditions, I expect her to start making arrests. Yeah, graduated response, opportunity to comply. The police use their supermarket sweep maneuver to arrest protesters throwing fireworks. You can see officers uh, look like making an intervention uh, on the south side of T-square. <laughs> But it's proving tricky to remove troublemakers from the crowd. Get a bubble! Get a bubble! Get a bubble! Good, because that's the tactics we were refreshing them with. Was that idea? Make the arrest, bubble, protect the rounds. With the suspect isolated in the bubble, protesters surround the police, giving them nowhere to go. Information is they're going to burst through the park imminently. We need to take the person with the flag to one side and intervene. Well, the officers are right there, and then they walk away again. Not and then they go, they're going to go into the park, and the officers are just standing, letting them go by. As the crowd become more hostile, police are concerned about the violence spreading. I want them to engage. 
Differentiate, intervene. Jim to Nick, over. Thank you. There seems to be a bit of information to suggest they're going to go into the West End. I really don't want this group going into the crowded West End. So, absolute cordons, please. Max McCarrie is absolute cordon right now. Come on, want to get nice and tight here. The Met have imposed a 9 pm deadline on the event. They're resorting to cordons to try and contain the crowd, and ending the protest on time is becoming increasingly unlikely. It's every chance we might nick a lot of people here now. I'm sorry? What's your emergency? Yeah, it's an emergency. Yeah. That guy is with a knife inside the store. He wants to open the till. What color skin does he have? He's a white skin guy. And how old is he, he look to you? He, he looks like around 45, 50. He's having a knife on his hand. Okay. And how big? The, small knife. Small knife? A hand knife, yeah. He, he, he wants us to open the till, but oh. we, uh, we, yeah, we said no, we can't okay. do it, so he broken some stuff. Okay. Okay, is he slim, fat, muscular? He, he, he's, a, he's a fat guy, a bit fat. Not that much fat, he's a muscular. So, so what, he's a muscular guy. Muscular, this guy, okay. Yeah. So is now, smaller? yeah, now, now he's crossing the road. He's, okay. he's moving to Brixton, Brixton side, yeah, he's walking. So it's not already on the media response that's passed that to the office a long time ago. Uh, okay. So they're travelling on blue lights. What they'll probably do first is drive around and see if they can find him. 20 minutes later, a local response team stop a man who admits he's the suspect they're looking for. Um, uh, your arrest is basically necessary because obviously with oh, yeah, no, around but, with a knife, no, but, we suspect that you might but, but injure somebody. But it's, it's in the tree. It's not okay. on okay. the tree. It's in the tree. What? Stabbed in the tree? Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's stabbed in the tree, apparently. What's your name, fella? Gary. Gary, all right, Gary, I'm Craig, all right? If you show us where it is... No problem. Right, that's great. All right? That's it. See it? That's it, stay there. Right, I'll just uh, film that. <laughs> In situ. I've got a tube, it's all right. That's a big one. Just got an LAS Right, because you've just told us where that knife is, and that's a knife sticking in the tree. Um, they're yeah, arresting yeah. you on suspicion of being in possession of an offensive weapon in a public uh, place. Uh, we... Thank you very much. We've got that. The suspect, Gary, will be taken to Brixton custody, where Brian is running the night shift. I bet your mummy fucking slapped you when you were a kid. Yeah? Yeah, she fucking did. Some people just completely refuse. They refuse to cooperate, refuse to engage. And that can become very, very trying. And he was still. Look, man. Just, just Look, man, you ain't no fucking teacher. You don't talk to me like that. Yeah? You ain't no teacher. Don't talk to me like that. I just wanted to... You ain't no teacher. I just wanted to... Not a teacher, though. Not a teacher. Yeah. You were arrested for being drunk and disorderly in a public place. He then decided to come up and put his finger in my face and tell me I'll point in your face if I fucking well want to. Please. Nobody wants to be here. Who wants to be arrested? Welcome to Brixton, fella. Why is this gentleman here, please? The next suspect to be checked in is Gary, who was arrested earlier in possession of a knife. Right, so what happened? Right, the last 24 hours, so since around 11 o'clock last night, have you had an alcoholic drink? Correct. Right, what have you been drinking, sir? Uh, Stella. How much have you been drinking? Um, last six hours, I suppose 24 cans. 24 cans of Stella in six hours? Yeah. So, are you an alcoholic? <laughs> I'm getting there. So, what's the postcode of your current home address, please? Um, no, for the boat. Not living anywhere. Where did you spend last night then? In Brockwell Park, yeah. yeah. Paints the Suntown. We've got a phone charger. His 
I spell my mum's ashes. And a freedom pass in his mother's name. And my mum's hair. Where? Probably in the bottom there with a lot of little trinkets. In here? Yeah. Trinket. Well, that's because I love her. You know, that's... Can you imagine waking up one day and not having a mum? Hell. You can run home to someone, and but there's no one there no more. You can't go up, you can't go with mum, dad, or... I'd like to go to Brockwell Park. Tree number three, bush two. Is that right? Take away, I I've never tried this old enough. One of the team? This please, Jack. We've done what we've done, and we've got to be... We've got to be grateful what we've been given. Can you see that knife in there? Correct, yeah. Is that the knife that you had with you when you went to Tesco? Yeah. I went, get the fucking money out of the till, and stay, they, they run away and all. But taking the money from the till was never your intention? Never at all. The question is, when you went in that shop, what was your motivation? What did you hope to get out of it? To get... to be here, where I was sitting now. To be nicked. No, I wanted to be arrested. Simple as that. I thought this would be, this would be my help. This would be my way out of life. Mm -hmm. If you're released from here, if you're given bail, what would you do? If I... if what? If you were... So you were charged and then given bail? I'll be gutted. Now, you don't have to let them go. If you have good evidence that they're going to commit further offences and it's a charging decision, then we can keep them in. Obviously, we try and keep bail where we can. We don't want to keep people locked up unnecessarily. So we, um, we look at everything, weigh up the evidence, and then try and make the right decision. Gary, I'll just be one moment, OK? Somebody's just done a bit of an error on your charges. Can I have a signature from you, please? Just to say that you're present when you're charged. It is no admission to the actual offences themselves. Okay, I'm going to refuse your bail. The reason I'm going to refuse your bail, Gary, is because you're now fixed abode and I've got concerns that you're going to commit further offences on bail. You've got a history of committing violence. These are serious offences, and I believe you're a substantial risk of uh, uh, violence to the public where you could cause members of the public serious harm. That's the reason I'm going to refuse you bail. And would you like to make any representations to me of why you believe you should get bail? OK. Now, whilst you're here, we'll look after you, obviously. We'll give you access to that medical attention. We'll give you food and drink. We can give you a shower, etc., but that can only happen during the night time because of how busy this station is. OK, so just let us know your needs. Obviously, I appreciate you're going to be here now for over two nights, OK? What if I do that? I might clear it, clear it out. Do you want something, sorry? No, I always just get by the night, Okay, I don't need one. Two, two. Okay, no, I think You don't meet a, a Gary every day. The allegation is he's committed a criminal offence. But we have a responsibility to look after him. His behaviour to carry around his mother's ashes. He's obviously he's not in a good place. Life's been pretty harsh to listen to him talk. You do wonder, different circumstances in his life, would he be in front of me today if life had treated him a bit better? Maybe not. It's 10pm. 
An hour since the curfew has run out on the Million Mask March. A hardcore element of protesters are refusing to leave and start to throw fireworks at the police. Jane says this group will not go. We're going to be telling them conditions have uh, expired and directing them to requ requesting them to leave. Send somebody up and start making arrests. The police respond by using their supermarket sweep tactic, having identified one of the people responsible. I'll do it, yeah. Is this our last one, is it? This is our last space. Hi. Hello there. Right, I'm a Kessler Sergeant, OK? Sorry, one moment. I, I, I speak Italian or Espanol? Do you speak any English? No. No English at all? A little bit? OK. Subject has been detained is under Section 80 of the Explosives Act, 1875. <laughs> Cioè, ero solamente... And my city is different. My city is uh, mafia, polizia, and I relax. In London for holiday, ciao. We're going to go in and make as many arrests as we can. It's taken nearly two hours to disperse the protesters. There's now only a few left in Parliament Square, but they're also refusing to leave. BBC are real bastards, yeah? And, oh, by the way, how come you reported World Trade Center 7 falling 20 minutes before it actually did? Yeah, explain that one. Come back and explain that one, BBC. What are we supposed to do? We're on a 24-hour vigil, man. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not part of that project. How are you being antisocial? Leave him alone! Oh, so Look at you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Why are you putting me down? Get off me! Because you're over me! Come here! Come here! Stand up here! Come on! Stand there! Just stand there, mate! I've done nothing wrong, and I've just been sitting in the chair. That's all I've been doing, and you're putting metal chains on there. No, I am shivering because I'm doing a 24-hour vigil for fuel poverty to highlight the fact that 15,000 people were killed in their own homes because they couldn't access heating. We've made a total of 47 arrests, uh, got uh, one officer injured, uh, unaware minor, I believe, one protester uh, who has suffered injuries, uh, um, not life-threatening, and uh, we've pretty much got sort of West End uh, unaffected uh, and things starting to return to normality, apart from the huge numbers of cops everywhere. On a tactical and operational level, uh, in my view, I'll be saying I've done a bloody brilliant job. Um, and uh, um, and that, that just goes to show that uh, London's a safer place as a result of what we do. With hindsight, um, it does seem a hugely expensive, costly operation for what was, in effect, something, a, a smaller element that you would get at your standard Saturday afternoon football match. It could have easily been the other way. It just isn't worth taking the risk and reducing that resource when it could be so much cost to London. So, just the way it is, I'm afraid.
Andy has been investigating a series of brutal cat killings for the last six months. With over 50 bodies found mutilated so far, he has finally been given a lead. Uh, we're going to uh, a flat which is two or three miles away from Croydon. Uh, it's the address of a, a fellow who was arrested ten days ago now uh, for a, a serious sexual assault, so a rape on a, um, an elderly lady uh, at her home address, which was within, within Croydon. Um, since his arrest, he's been um, his name has been given to us by a, a few different people, saying that they think he's involved in the, the cat mutilation series. Um, nothing specific, as you know, I know he did it, but we haven't had an offence in ten days. The night after he was arrested, um, they stopped. Right. What we're looking for is the obvious bits of cats. Um, knives, uh, shears, or kind of... Didn't think that cut with two edges that can be used that way. I think if, the, if he has got bits of cat, if they're not in the freezer, then we're going to smell them before you see them. Do the obvious one. Oh. That doesn't fill me full of confidence for what's going to be down here. No, monkey, but no dead cats. You still get that little, little pang when I open up the freezer. What are we going to find in here? Um, and it's going to be one of these. We're going to walk in thinking, well, maybe, maybe not, um, and open the door to find. <laughs> I don't know what we're going to find. Despite evidence of cats being in the flat, there's nothing to suggest the man who lived here is responsible for the series of killings. Can we go back to doing drugs for us, please? <laughs> <laughs> All right, but they, but they sell drugs. They tend to keep their uh, places a bit more clean. Don't they? A little bit more clean, yeah. I wouldn't have got the warrant if I didn't think there was a possibility it could have been here. Um, it's seemingly not, so... There you go. But we're getting used to it on this job. There's, uh, Lots of doors opening and they've all been slammed in my face at the moment. We'll get there, but I um, don't know how many more of these we're going to do before we don't get there. There are now more than 100 cats who are thought to have been killed and mutilated by the same culprit. I think all the time they're carrying on, then the Met itself will get crucified if we stepped away from it. If, for example, this fellow were to go out and then start doing this sort of thing to humans, I'll get kicked from here to Chelsea. And it will be, well, why didn't we deal with it when it was at a low level? I think it runs until it's solved or it stops. Tango 4-4 four, four to control. 4-4 four, four, control, go ahead. Control 4-4. Four, four. I'm at the scene of an RTA on Finn Way, about 100 metres past Chesser Lane. Hello? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? I need ambulance and fire services urgently. One vehicle on its side with one male occupant. It appears to be smoke coming from the engine, fluid leaking from the rear of the vehicle. High risk of engine fire. You can have other units to assist. Received. Tango 46, you're the nearest unit. 46 responded. We're about 10 minutes away. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Sir, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? My name's Robert. I'm a police officer. Are you okay? What's happening? You've been in an accident, but it's okay. 
Uh, can you tell me your name? Uh, Alistair. My name's Alistair. Right, Alistair? Alistair. I need you to tell me if you're hurt. Uh, uh, you gotta get me out of here. You gotta get me out of here. Right, I need you to stay calm, Alistair. Help's on the way, but I can't move you just yet. Uh, get me out of here, please. It's okay, Alistair. I'm here with you. I'm not going anywhere, okay? Okay. You just hold tight. Okay. Yeah. 